Next up, we have two amazing people joining us. I'm going to have our uh, slides go back on, on screen. So I want to bring on Alan and Kai from Railgun Project. Uh, if you're a local, you definitely know what Railgun is. If you are not a local, you're about to find out how cool Railgun is. And Alan and Kai are going to talk about all the things that you should be mindful, or you should be mindful of, and how you think about better on-chain privacy on Ethereum. So we'll cover how you can take advantage of keeping your identity and your assets private and not revealing too much, but also what is a good way to do that without necessarily causing too much trouble for everybody else and for yourself in the future. So I'll, I'll let them uh, get set up with their laptops. And uh, without further ado, let's welcome Kai and Alan on stage. How's it going, everybody? Yeah, good morning. Um, I'm sure that this will be like the most interesting talk of the day. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'm Alan. Uh, I'm one of the contributors to uh, Railgun. Hi, I'm Kai. I'm also a contributor to Railgun. And um, no surprise, our talk is going to be on privacy. And so uh, maybe, Kai, you can elucidate the crowd to what Railgun is exactly. Sure. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, Railgun is a protocol that adds a new uh, private address type to uh, Ethereum and other EVM chains. Yeah. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about the privacy problem that exists in crypto. Um, and the, the reason that I contribute to privacy and why I advocate to uh, people to, to use privacy is that I believe that it is a keystone to pretty much every financial mechanism that exists uh, in the world. Um, a little bit of crowd participation here. Uh, who here has like used Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, some sort of like Web2 payment mechanism? Yeah, great. For people who can't see, uh, everybody raise their hand. Um, and um, the reality is, is with those kind of mechanisms, right? you don't get to learn what's in other people's uh, balance. right? So if you take and do a wire transfer, if you send somebody money on PayPal, you don't get to learn how much is in their wallet. right? Nor do they get to know how much you have in your wallet or what your mortgage is or perhaps which banks that you do business with. And it's none of their business. right? It's something that we take for granted in traditional finance and we don't talk about enough in the crypto space. right? So who here has actually done a peer-to-peer -peer crypto transfer, sent crypto to somebody else uh, in the world in crypto? Again, pretty much everybody, right? And uh, you don't have to raise your hands for this part, but um, who here, just think about this for a second. Once you do that transfer, it goes to Etherscan and then proceeds to judge them uh, harshly for all the NFTs and shit coins that they've purchased. And you know, maybe look at the age of the wallet, right? And see if you're more OG than them or something like this. And you know, which centralized exchanges that they're using and, and this sort of thing, right? The reality is, is like we think this kind of voyeurism is cute and fun, right? But the reality is, is it's really quite dangerous. And I think that it ultimately limits the, um, like the long-term viability for crypto. Um, I think that like real actors in the space of finance don't want to have their balances uh, doxed uh, on chain. And so when we think about that privacy problem, right, we have a lot of different things. When you're, um, my background's in more traditional finance. Um, you know, strategy leakage would be a really bad thing, right? Who here follows whale alerts on Twitter? Right? Yeah, if you're not, you should. It's great. Uh, you can see some really cool stuff. Um, shout out to those dudes. Um, and so, yeah, you have like uh, strategy leakage. So if you're charging people 2 and 20 as a hedge fund to trade their money on chain, what's the incentive for them to give you a management fee if they can just follow your wallets on Nansen? Right? The reality is, is people don't want to do that. So a lot of on-chain actors go through great links that arguably are overhead to their, their operations that shouldn't be there because they don't have wallet privacy. Right? There's other market limitations. In fact, we held an event yesterday, and I had several people, I won't point you guys out, don't worry, you have to raise your hands, who take their, um, you know, their invoices and salaries and pay them through Railgun to prevent um, you know, leakage of people's salary information, which in some uh, nation states is considered to be uh, privileged and private uh, by law, right? Uh, and then there's the there's surveillance and, and safety uh, questions, right? Um, the last thing you want to do, in my opinion, is take and tie your name to a wallet address that has a lot of money in it, right? This creates issues and uh, potential vectors for phishing attacks, right? And SIM swaps. People want to go after your wallets if they have lots of money in them, right? And if we expect this to take over, right, people are going to have money on chain. Uh, they should be able to have privacy to protect themselves against these uh, would-be identity actors in the space, right? 
And then there's a lot of questions around like uh, just general data compliance, right? GDPR. Uh, there's a lot of public DeFi usage that goes directly against privacy regulations around the world. Um, and then there's the, uh, the other privacy problem, right? Um, privacy tools are under attack. Um, if you guys weren't aware, there's people around the world uh, getting in a lot of trouble for contributing to uh, you know, privacy tech. And this asks a lot of questions about the legality and uh, you know, the regulatory uh, uncertainty is pretty great, right? Um, and then we have the other side of that, right, which is like the issues with on-chain analytics and the heuristics that are associated with these cases um, and just on-chain analytics in general, right? Uh, in fact, CypherTrace very famously came out with a study and found a 64% error rate with the clustering around the, Bit, uh, the Bitcoin fog case. Um, in fact, Elizabeth Bisbee, who's a pretty big deal in chain analysis, uh, she's in the C-suite, uh, was asked for uh, statistical error rates around that same case, and you know what she said? We don't keep any. They don't do any of that stuff, right? There's no science around it, right? And this leads to things like mass, uh, misattribution to hacks and things like this. Very famously, FTX got hacked and it was attributed by Elliptic to Russia. And you know who it turned out to be? Three random dudes in flyover country in the United States. <laughs> they weren't Russian at all, right? Uh, and so, like, uh, it's not all bad, though, right? There's a lot of really interesting and good pro-privacy regulations and rulings that are coming out around the world, right? Uh, you know, there's HR 4108, right, which is uh, an anti-surveillance uh, mechanism in the United States. Great read, by the way, and uh, challenges a lot of the things that are going on from the DOJ today. Uh, there was the, um, uh, the, the Russia case that was decided by the human rights courts over in Europe to say that backdoor encryption is uh, against your human rights. Uh, so you have the right to encryption according to uh, certain human rights uh, courts. Uh, and then as, a, uh, as an American, I think that like the, Calif uh, the California Consumer Privacy Act uh, is, is really great. It's a good read. It's pretty uh, lowbrow, easy to understand. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's a lot of problems. Let's talk a little bit about the other other privacy problem. Yeah, so like actually building privacy um, on chain um, is pretty hard. Um, so number one, um, I think we're all familiar with Ethereum here, being a Ethereum conference. Um, you know, like privacy tech is very uh, computationally intensive and um, you know, the computation costs gas on chain. And so the more uh, computation you use, the more gas, the more expensive it is for uh, users to use it. Uh, if you're building on uh, on chain, you don't really set the consensus rules. You kind of have to play by uh, the decisions that um, someone else has made, and so um, you know you're, you're kind of constrained in the uh, way that you're able to design your uh, protocol. Uh, there's a limited set of of like cryptographic primitives that you get to use. So maybe there's like a hash function that might be ideal for your use case, but if it's just not supported by the environment that you're building in, well, like too bad. You got to pick something else, right? Um, and you know, you, like it be, being a privacy application, you want to run everything uh, client side for both privacy and, and security purposes, right? Um, because you know, the more sort of like touch points you have with the uh, external world, the more avenues there are for um, you know potential like security issues or uh, avenues for like privacy leakage, right? Um, and so, um, doing all of this client side though is like you know, the, the majority of people. Um, interact with the internet through their mobile phones, right? These are, while they're very capable devices, just still nowhere near on the same level as like a server farm. And so um, doing things like generating um, snark proofs on device, um, you know, these are pretty computationally intensive tasks um, are like really difficult. Um, and, you know, just plain synchronizing data with the chain. Um, if you don't have the, um, if you don't have the luxury of running like a centralized indexer or something, um, you know you need to somehow get all of the data from uh, an RPC, process it all, store it locally, and you know the compute that you have on these on like mobile devices and the uh, storage um, is just not the same performance and same availability that you'd get um, if you just had a server farm somewhere. Um, and I think the last one is probably the, the spiciest, right? Like um, the D in DeFi is like really hard, um, so. <laughs> You know, a, a lot of uh, protocols, you know, that claim to be DeFi uh, end up uh, sort of relying on these uh, centralized services, you know, maybe like an indexer or, um, you know, maybe they go and take uh, transactions and like simulate them uh, server side to see what the outcome would be and, and things like this, which um, if you're building an application where you're trying to do as much client side as possible, um, having these like 
you know, client uh, or these server-side centralized components in the in the mix uh, makes things really difficult. Yeah, and so maybe you can kind of walk us through, like, just to take a step back for a second, like, for people who don't know about Railgun, like, what's like the easiest way to understand it? Yeah. Um, so you know, as I said earlier, um, you know, it adds a new private um, address type. So these addresses totally start legible. with uh, zero. ZK, um, and you know, if you try to look these up on a block explorer, you can't see the uh, address itself. Um, all you can see is just sort of a, a smart contract which uh, contains uh, ZK UTXOs. Um, but you know, if you have the uh, private key to uh, one of these addresses, you can now go and magically decrypt these uh, <laughs> these uh, encrypted UTXOs and, and see what your balance looks like and what your transaction history looks like. Looks like. Yeah, and so like the ultimate goal is to create something that's uh, very effective at being a, um, a private EOA. And so, you know, there's some other considerations back to the, the, the single other um, privacy problem, right, is around like uh, assurance and compliance mechanisms. And so over the years, um, for people who don't know, Railgun's been around for, uh, God, almost going on four years now, but yeah, three years of this. Uh, you know, there's things like viewing keys, right? So you can actually take and uh, give read access to your, your private balance. And this is actually what I would call like true self-sovereignty, right? So you have the, the individual liberty to uh, self-select who sees exactly what uh, when it comes to your private transactions. Um, right when Railgun got started, uh, we did a partnership with the guys over at Coinly um, and made it such that uh, wallet providers can take and uh, give uh, CSV exports that are uh, compliant with Coinly. So if you're doing your taxes and you have your, your private transactions, you can export those and huck them into Coinly and they'll uh, uh, they'll spit out a nice little uh, tax report for you, which is really great. Um, and then, um, yeah, we've been working and contributing to this whole new thing called privacy pools, which people are probably familiar with from the Amin Soleimani and uh, Vitalik paper around um, a practical equilibrium in privacy, right? Effectively, what these tools allow you to do is generate zero-knowledge proofs uh, around um, your non-interaction with a specific accumulator of addresses. And so this can be something like the OFAC SDN list. It could be something like Scam Sniffer or maybe like the MetaMask API for bad actors, chain abuse, fill in your favorite um, reporting mechanism, uh, Sam CZ's new thing, right, SEAL 911, et cetera. Um, in fact, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about like the, the more mechanical architecture of this yeah, so I mean, uh, essentially, you, you're um, taking all of the shields um, that um, occur in uh, the privacy system. Um, you uh, prune out all of the um, shields that are in your um, exclusion list from uh, the Merkle tree that you're proving against. Um, and now you're left with uh, a Merkle tree that um, consists only of the um, activity that you do want to associate with. Um, and you can generate a proof against this Merkle tree showing that whenever you do a transaction, um, all of the uh, inputs into that transaction exist in this tree, right? So by definition, must not exist in the uh, exclusion set. Um, and you take the outputs of those uh, of your um, transaction that you've just proved and add it back into the tree. And so now anyone that uh, receives your um, the output of your transaction can then go ahead and uh, create a proof um, against those new outputs because they now exist in the tree. Um, and this can be repeated um, on and on through subsequent transactions as, as far as uh, needs to be done. Yeah, and so effectively what you can do uh, is you can split the anonymity set in between um, you know, what you would consider to be uh, you know, good actors uh, and, and bad actors and effectively make tools uh, in the privacy space that are as obnoxious as humanly possible for people who would be considered to be chain abusers uh, to, to use. Um, and I'm happy to report, right, in spite of uh, what most people would consider to be a pretty uh, sad state of affairs, right, that privacy tools are on the up and up. Uh, railgun usage uh, has um, definitely been an up and to the right experience. People are really excited to have privacy in the space, right? Uh, there's been a lot of people who've contributed to this over the years and have like deployed Railgun on different chains. Uh, Arbitrum, Polygon, BSC, it's on Ethereum. Hopefully some people in here are builders and they want to deploy it other places too, right? Uh, people contributed to new ZK circuit cryptography, which has been really, really fascinating um, and allowed Railgun to get like gas savings over the years. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in the future, right, um, that we're, we're pretty excited about as well, right? Um, we've been working on uh, as uh, a bunch of contributors uh, on this new thing that we call Railgun Connect. Uh, and effectively, if you guys want to, actually, if you want to learn more about that, I could totally stand up here for another 20 minutes and talk about it. So find me after and we'll, We'll give you all the great alpha. But suffice it to say, what it allows you to do is connect this private EOA to 
any front end that you would like and transact from this private balance. So you can have that true private EOA experience that you would expect from a privacy solution that says it's a private wallet. Uh, we're continuing research on privacy pools. Uh, there's this new thing called V3, uh, which is gonna be like a really great modular architecture for Railgun. Um, Connect, as we mentioned. Uh, and we're doing a lot of research on gas savings because I think a lot of the reasons why people move privacy off chain uh, is because they don't want to do the due diligence associated with making something exist in a fully on-chain architecture um, and they want to write their own rules in an L2 or something like this. And so in, in closing remarks, I would say that, you know, I've been really excited to meet a lot of people. Uh, it's my first time in Australia, uh, in spite of working with various Australians over the, the last couple of decades, actually. Um, and it's been really cool to hear about people telling me that like they're using Railgun to do various things. And one of the things that I would tell you is like, if you don't want to go on Twitter and proclaim your privacy advocacy, like tell your friends, right? You know, a lot of people uh, use VPNs now because their friends told them to do so, right? And this is a really great way to protect your data on the internet. And by like word of mouth, we can take and do a lot in this space, right? Uh, I spend a lot of my time, did I go out? So I spend a lot of my time like doing advocacy, reaching out to um, you know, governments and uh, law enforcement agencies and things like this. And I think that one of the things that we should do as uh, citizens of the nation is make sure that we talk to our leaders about this stuff. Um, I see like a lot of the things that are going on today in the space is a continuation of the crypto wars of the 90s. Uh, you know, we, we basically uh, decided with the Bernstein case in the United States that we can talk about cryptography and export it without a munitions license. Um, and now we're gonna take and decide whether or not we have the right to use it in a peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem. And we won't be able to do that unless people voice their opinions that they wanna use that stuff. So please do. Thanks for coming.